What's your formula for telling a good story? You say you love telling stories, you love to see the, the look in people's eyes, micro expressions. Um, well, you want to be able to tell a good story, you know, and you want to have a beginning and middle and end on them, you know, so um, I don't know, it's just, uh, yeah, it usually comes off of somebody, like someone will say something about this, and I'll have a, I usually have a story that will complement other stories. And you never know what that is until, you know, until you hear somebody else speaking and then you'll tell a story about what happened to you when, when you were a kid or, you know, whatever, and you just start building them up, I guess. You say you kind of can command a room? Yeah. People kind of flock to you and... Well, no, I, what I'm saying is I'm comfortable, you know, going around and introducing myself and what, what, what I mean, I, you know, what I mean by take over a room that if it's an event like, you know, Carol the Bells when we had the screening, I'm very comfortable. It's like being at a wedding, you know, when you're the, when your daughter's getting married and you got to go greet everybody. I'm very comfortable with doing that. And, and the same as, you know, at a party or something like that for, uh, you know, for business purposes and stuff like that, you know. Uh, like I said, a screening of Carol the Bells to meet the people that come down and support you and, you know, make them feel like they're a part of the whole thing. It's being a host. It's Captain Stubing. Right. And being a director is being a good host? I think so. Right. So in telling a good story, though, you have to keep it interesting. And if you can yeah. just see someone's attention is waning, how do you bring them back? I don't have to bring them back. <laughs> wow. Okay. Are you a Leo, if I'm by Lucy, the way? No, no I'm, I'm a Libra. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, so the scale. No, okay. if you, yeah, if it's not working, you're not, you, you ditch know. it. Okay. You ditch the story. All right. right. You but short. you try to know, but it's looking, the most important thing is looking in people's eyes and, and get it, making that connection when you're telling them. Like if I'm telling a story and then someone comes in and interrupts it in the middle, it drives me fucking crazy. I don't, I, I don't, li I don't like losing... Like if I'm gonna tell a story, I want whoever I'm telling the story to be into it and making that contact and telling that story. You know, and if you can't command the attention, because that's what it is, it's, you know, you, you, you know you're, you're, it's your audience. You wanna entertain, you want, I mean, people tell stories because they want to entertain or there's a commonality, you know. And so you learned about being an entertainer very young. Did you have to, around the dinner table, were there you and your siblings trying to outdo one another at supper time or no? No, I think it was more compliment. We enjoyed each other's company, you know. We enjoyed each other's company. I mean, when I was very young, I knew how to make people laugh. And, and uh, I, you know, that's like, in fact, when you, when you know you can make someone laugh, you know, that's a very strong, that's a strong tool. When you work with the kids uh, for inclusion Great films, sense of humor. Great, that's what kids. I was wondering, yeah. They can't. You have to see the interviews that I do with the kids. I saw some of the, I don't know if it was behind the scenes for Normal People Scare Me or was no, the no, actual that's trailer? Not, no, I'm not talking about, oh, I'm talking okay. about the camps that we do. The camps, okay. And I interview 50 of the kids, each camp. And eight different questions and asking them, you know, life questions. Like Nobody what? ever talks to these kids that way. I'm asking advice from them. Like what? On what well, my daughter's getting married, okay? Uh, this is back when she was getting married. Oh, I see, okay. And uh, we just bought the wedding dress and we got the venue. I said, it's beautiful. We're really, really excited. I said, but... Um, I don't like the guy she's marrying, what do I do? And then they start giving me advice about, well, you know, in movies, you can take them out into the park. When not looking, you can shoot them, you know, stuff like that. Or, you know, and I, and I just said, nobody ever asked me why I don't like him. And it was like, okay, well, why don't you like him? I said, well, number one, he's really good looking. Well, that's not bad. I said, number <laughs> Number two, he's the nicest guy in the whole world. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. I said, and he treats her like gold. He goes, well, there's nothing wrong with that. And I said, and he's 
got a lot of hair. Then what could be wrong with yeah, that? Hair. He's goes, too perfect. And you don't. He said, you know, or my favorite one was, uh, uh, they said, I understand now. He goes, you're kind of in the same boat that my dad's in. And I said, okay, what boat is that? He said, the hair cul-de-sac. Okay. Yeah, I'm. I'm there. Where? where the hair where, cold uh, sack. Ah, I said. Okay. Oh, I said cold <laughs> sack. Took really? me a minute. Okay. Okay. Uh huh. Uh -huh. I mean, uh, so I mean, just just stuff all the time. I mean, just. Right. I enjoy that. That's my favorite part of the camp is doing the interviews, and then they have to pitch me their stories. I have to prove them. So. What type of stories? Whatever they come up with. In terms of a story of a film they want to make. Well, the film they want to make, you know. We'll have different themes. It'll be like, uh, you can't judge a book by its cover. Uh, this year we want to do films on social impact. It's always something. And then they make the films and they make the PSAs. And between the interviews and the behind the scenes and the pitches, you have a half hour documentary and then a vehicle to show uh, the films. So. You said 11 years you've been doing this with uh, Impact. Since 2006. So. Okay. How have you seen the evolution? of young people. I know right now they have these climate activists, which I think are great. Maybe some parents don't think that's great. Mm -hmm. I'm not a parent. But I think it's great that people are more cause-driven now. It seems like Generation X, yeah. my generation, we weren't that cause-driven. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but baby boomers were, you know, yeah. each one has its own sort of thing that they're after, whether it's leisure or fighting for a cause. Mm -hmm. What do you see with the young people that are coming into the camps now? Well, I, it's just so so video games and and all the uh, uh, all the devices now. If uh, uh, we we don't let them have their devices when they're at the camp, they got to focus in on what they're doing. I don't know that that's a good thing. Um, I, I don't know. I, I it doesn't change that much, really. No. No. Do you think that they're so into the devices because that's their world that they can control? Well, it is. I mean, look at, I mean, you would go out to a restaurant, everybody's on their phone. It's just, I find myself doing it. I try not to, but, you know, when you think about how much you use the device, uh, I, I, you know, I, I, I don't think it's a great thing. Sure, no, I get it. We can be ruled by our technology, but... I'm talking about kids. I mean, you haven't stopped playing that video game you're playing right Yeah, now. I know. And by the way, oh, hang on. Somebody's texting me real quick. Um, no, I think that that in, in the sense of um, if somebody doesn't feel a part of the world, they don't feel included. They're going yeah. right. to find so an attachment that's what's to something. A, that's what's important about the camps and the workshops is they are included. And we make them a part of something bigger than that. You know, an outcome. The outcome is the film you do or being a part and you share that with your family. You know, and you make a film, that's forever.